Hello, well we're back. I am working now on the brake system of the trailer and trying to get it done. I've already done the other side in order to practice to see how well I could do this and if all the information I had gathered via YouTube videos and illustrated parts breakdowns and different things like that were accurate. Pretty straight up on those. Um, I'm already set to go. One thing I will always caution people on is please use good strong jacks along with, or jack stands I actually had a cheap CJ7 I was restoring oh, in the, my younger days and had the cheap jack stand I had while I was underneath it collapse or give out and it collapsed on me I got out of there probably not a hundredth of a second as I scooted out as fast as I could before it squished, uh, squished down on me so please use good ones as you can see here I'm not just doing the brake shoes I'm doing the entire assembly drums bearings everything this is all gonna be all brand new brake system when I'm done I even have some work to do to the emergency pull brake on the front because it's, it doesn't like it's ever been used and it's broken so I'm going to work through this the best I can step by step and as you see I've got my stuff here I'm using lithium grease uh, the bearings call for a high temperature grease and that's what we're going to be using here I got my torque wrench to, to torque the castle nut at 50 feet, foot pounds uh, we'll be going through some of this as we go along and of course I got my favorite brew <laughs> the first thing I'm going to work on is just getting the tire off um, that's not too hard as you can see there's bearing buddy on it I'm going to clean those up and I will reuse it. The one on the other side was in good shape, so I'm assuming this one is also. I also have an extra spare set of the rubber caps that go over it that I had from a utility trailer that I put back together several years ago after it was given to me. So we'll be using those and let's see what we can do. All right. Tires off, as you can see, they're all rusted up pretty good. I'm going to get that off next and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. It, the other one was pretty bad shape. I'm hoping this one isn't quite as bad. Okay, the bearing buddy's off. Now I'm going to clean off this gray so you'll find a castle nut copper cotter pin <laughs> and uh, your washer. I'm going to pull those off. This should all come out in one piece and we'll see what happens. As a quick note, that castle nut is an inch and a half. Uh, you either have to use a wide uh, jaw crescent wrench or get a half an inch and a half socket, which I did anyway, so that I could also put it on my torque wrench when we're all done. It comes off pretty simple, just messy. You, this is one of those things you got to really watch out for over torquing these when we're all done. It can be really bad. You can mess up your bearings. Yep, come off easy, just like the other one. All right, there we go. Not a lot of light in here, I'm sorry. But as you see, it's these are old. The brakes are down about half of what they used to be, the thinnest part being the front down here. Uh, these probably didn't have another two, 3,000 miles in them before these were gonna be bad on the inside down here. So one of the things you should always remember when changing these, if you get just the pads, you're small in the front, big in the back, Pretty simple. What I'm going to do now, the wires are back here. The wires don't require any polarity. It doesn't matter which side you put on which, so you don't have to worry about marking these or anything about worrying about anything about where they go. It's just a straight circuit. It's pretty simple that way. All right, so that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do now, since I'm going to replace the whole assembly, is I'm going to go in behind, pull the four bolts or nuts off, and yank it off. One thing you ought to know is here's your wires here. They come out the back here now. This one is going to come in. This There's a wire that comes down here. This white one feeds in. And it also splits down and goes down inside the axle. Let's see if I can show you. There we go. Here's where it goes back in the axle to the other side where it feeds into the other brake. This is the head of the two, so the wire comes down here. Making sure you're doing this, that you clip the right wires and that when you're putting them back together, I use weather tight butt connectors so that moisture doesn't get into them afterwards. 
Uh, you just need a little heat gun afterwards. They're a little more expensive, a few pennies. But they will keep moisture out of the connection. So we'll be doing that at the end. But I just wanted to show you what happens here as the wire comes out from out along the uh, frame. Connects to this one. This one also splits off with a wire going down inside the axle and over to the other side. Okay, I got the bolts off. Pretty simple. I've cut the wires, got the bolts off. It just comes right off now.